San Francisco has been in pursuit forever. We have not gotten there. It's just been perpetual, you know, and, and frankly, we've, we've kind of become notorious uh, for studying and talking and considering and not actually doing CCA, not getting to the point where we can have the kind of success stories that you heard from Jeff and Jamie. Those are really terrific outcomes that you're hearing about. I do, I do also appreciate Joe's caution that those terrific successes, those terrific outcomes that, that um, Marin Clean Energy and Sonoma Clean Power are seeing really are a product of the time that they launched. Um, will we be able to sustain that? I think that's an important question, and I think that's the part, that's part of the reason why San Francisco hasn't gotten off the, out of the, tra off the track yet. You know, we've just been running and running and running and not actually getting there. Um, what I wanted to do was just kind of give a quick overview because, you know, there's lots of stories about how come we are where, we're, where we are. Um, and I'd like to give a, get a chance to kind of tell our own story. Um, but mostly I want to I wanna close with some, some of the key things that I think were lessons for us in, in, um, in being in perpetual pursuit because I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Um, and I really do think that part of the benefit of getting everybody together today is to, is to have a chance to talk about what the lessons are, the lessons of success and the lessons of sort of stalemate that San Francisco's in. Um, before I do that, I do want to also do a little commercial for San Francisco. You know, there, when people think about a utility providing electric service in San Francisco, they think about PG&E, which is completely understandable. They provide about 83% of um, San Francisco's population with their electric service. But the city and county of San Francisco and my organization within the city provides the power service for all of the city functions. So when you fly out of SFO, if, you're, if you find yourself at uh, um, uh, uh, walking along the San Francisco port, if you're in the ferry building, if you're in city hall, all of those facilities receive electric, bundled electric service from San Francisco Public Utilities Commission from the power enterprise as a um, municipally owned utility, a publicly owned utility, part of, part of Joe's tutorial this morning. Um, uh, and, and, you know, so we, we generate on our own about one and a half billion kilowatt hours of greenhouse gas-free electricity from our uh, large hydro system, primarily. Uh, we also have our own uh, services, our, our um, uh, rooftop solar in uh, about seven and a half megawatts of, of rooftop solar that we have developed on city properties. We have our own biogas facilities at the wastewater treatment facility San Francisco owns. We, um, we have plans for small inline hydro on our water system um, that's RPS qualified. So, you know, we're, we're providing about a billion of those billion and a half kilowatt hours to our own customers. And then we sell in the wholesale market the balance that we aren't consuming ourselves. We also provide distributed generation and energy efficiency services to our customer base. Uh, so, you know, by way of saying that, you know, we really are very well equipped to run a CCA program, but we haven't been able to get it off the ground largely because of the politics. Um, our program was designed to achieve certain city goals. You know, we really saw it as a mechanism to address global climate change through choice. It provides the city the, uh, uh, the, the ability to offer a choice to be green to our residents. You know, a lot of enthusiasm for that among our elected officials. Uh, in San Francisco, most residents are renters with uh, very low usage. They can't individually afford solar or wind or don't own a roof of their own. Um, and so really, their, their only way to act on their desire to be green is to um, join a program like the Clean Power SF program we had proposed. Uh, so that was part of what was, was really appealing. And, and I'm sure many of your um, constituents have a similar interest in being able to sort of collectively go green instead of individually. Not everyone can afford to put solar on the roof. Uh, and for us, you know, it was also a very uh, important part of our program as a long-term goal to reach everyone in the city to create local and regional um, generation and efficiency assets. You know, we began, we were one of the first uh, communities to um, establish through ordinance a community choice aggregation program. Uh, that was in 2004. The enabling le legislation was introduced and passed in 2002. Uh, so that was in 2004, and we've been in this pursuit ever since. Uh, Mayor Newsom signed the formal declaration that's required to initiate our investigation into CCA, and that allowed us, and that was in December of 05. That's what allowed us to get our customer data from PG&E, 
and to really begin to study in earnest and understand our customer base. And that's a lesson point. I think you really need to understand your, your, your customer base. Uh, we set aside funds from our um, publicly owned utility revenues. We set aside funds to, to fund and support the CCA effort. And our board of supervisors approved a draft implementation plan. An implementation plan is a requirement of the state law, uh, setting forth our program goals in 2007. We issued an RFP to actually procure CCA services uh, in 2000, in September of 2009. Uh, we we um, selected a supplier in October of 2009. We went through a full-blown negotiation that went kaput. Uh, we found we did not have uh, a counterparty that was actually financially uh, stable enough to procure on our behalf. And so we had to abandon that effort uh, and start again with a revised implementation plan, which was adopted by our board in March of 2010. And then uh, we issued another uh, RFP for a supplier in August of, 20, of 2010. Um, you know, then the other, the other thing that you always have to keep an eye on when you're uh, implementing a program like this is sort of the outside forces. Uh, you know, while we're developing the program, while we're negotiating with another sort of round two uh, counterparty to, to work with us, uh, PG&E uh, uh, went to the California PUC and modified the way their rates are structured which was largely in response to Marin's successes, early successes. Um, PG&E went uh, to the regulator and flattened and reduced their generation rate, which made it harder for us to compete. Not impossible, but harder. Uh, that was sort of one of the early actions that, that really kind of made all of us go, oh, OK, we have to readjust. Um, in the 2011-12 budget process, we added more funding. Uh, in February of 2011, we, um, we were authorized by our general manager to begin negotiations with a cre our, credit, our new creditworthy counterpart. In the, in, right around that same time, in the spring of 2012, PG&E uh, uh, introduced an application to the California PUC to implement their own green, green tariff offering uh, in competition with, with programs like ours. Um, I think uh, uh, they, they really heard the message of what we were talking about in terms of what's, what San Francisco wants, what San Franciscans want. Uh, and again, there's, a, there's another lesson there. It's that, it's that you know, keep an eye on your competitor. Um, by 2012, the PUC uh, Commission supported a program and authorized uh, the, the contract for services with Shell Energy North America. We had our rate fairness board. In San Francisco, we have a rate fairness board process that sets the rates for all of the utility services San Francisco operates. Um, that board came forward and, and approved the rates uh, at a not to exceed level. So by September of 2013, we were before our board of supervisors and we received authorization to go forward with the program. Um, that was a big Yahoo moment for us. We thought, wow, we're finally there, September of 2013. We still haven't launched. Uh, so we've been on pause ever since. Uh, the issues that we were trying to accomplish, you know, a 100% renewable content, local build, uh, contracts that would provide supply for us as a bridge, uh, the plan to manage our own energy purchasing and scheduling functions, uh, uh, launching out to all of our neighborhoods in our very diverse San Francisco communities with multiple languages. We had that all dialed in. We've got uh, program elements to address low-income customers. Uh, we had ex extensive outreach for, as I say, our, our multilingual uh, communities. Uh, but notwithstanding that, we couldn't get past the policymakers' concerns about, well, it's an opt-in program. And why isn't it an opt-in? I'm sorry. Why isn't it an opt-in program? You know, we're going to have accidental customers because of language barriers. We're going to have people who don't really want us. We're going to have a backlash. Um, why does it necessarily have to, you know, be a, a choice of maybe being more expensive? Do we? Is there some way for us to accomplish that? program with, uh, at the same price or cheaper than PG&E. It turns out, yes, you can. But you'll never know that if you can't start. Um, and, and the, the uh, concerns about local build, well, are they going to be union jobs? Are we going to be able to begin that right away? Um, you know, how come you need to have money to build something? You know, some questions that really puzzles a person as to, as to how, how we can get, get off the ground. But, 
but at the, the basic questions about, you know, very legitimate policy questions too, about affordability, about how green it is, given renewable energy credits being part of the mix of most uh, clean power programs, and, and really, you know, how can we have a very effective local build? Now, those are very legitimate uh, concerns and questions. So um, takeaway lessons that I, I'd like to share with you. You know, you really need to have an educated, elected champion or, or more. You need, to have, you, you need to have folks who can, who can speak from that political passion point about the program, while, while you have staff who are able to talk about the, the business end of it uh, and be the technos. Um, you know, San Francisco had, had some bumpy roads on that, on that front. We have um, lots of stakeholder enthusiasm for the program, um, not uh, a lot of depth to the knowledge of all the program elements, um, and, and it really, you really need to partner with your stakeholder, the stakeholders in your community and make sure that you're all on the same page. I think San Francisco would have launched a program quite some time ago, but for that dynamic, that stakeholder um, uh, staff dynamic. Uh, start, just start. Um, you know, you're, you're, you, you, can, you can start and be ready to build to achieve all of your goals. You're, you're not going to be able to achieve all of your goals on day one. It's just not financially feasible to expect you can. But if you never start, you're never going to be able to get to the success story as you heard. You know, Marin didn't start with 54 megawatts of uh, generation being built in California for their program. They're there today, but that's not where they started. But if you don't start, you can't get there. Um, use the budding CCA networks. Joe mentioned this. We're all here. Get to know each other. Realize that you're gonna go. If you're gonna go down this road, you can be um, uh, mentors and helpful to each other. Uh, and and you really need those relationships if you're going to be effective in the regulatory and legislative arenas. You know, Marin can tell you about the the bashings we've gone through each legislative session. There's something about CCAs that ends up being an anti-CCA effort. And you need each other to help get through that. Don't enter, underestimate the competitive response. You know, PG&E's actions affect the CCA bottom line. Prop 16 is a great example of, of uh, uh, the extent that PG&E will go to to um, uh, uh, reduce competition. AB 2145 is another one, more current. Retain flexibility. And I think, Jeff, you mentioned this in a, in a different way. You talked about it being um, light on written policy. To me, that's, you know, you retain flexibility so that you can operate within a changing electric market because it is a changing electric market. If your policymakers are too directive and too, you know, written in stone, you're not going to be able to maneuver and you're going to need to be able to maneuver. It's a competitive environment. Government's not used to that, but it is. Uh, and then know your customer's energy habits. Um, you know, a program like Marin has when they first launched it wouldn't work in San Francisco. Marin's customer base they have a lot of large, uh, large energy consumers. San Francisco's, uh, you know, most San Francisco customers do not get out of Pier 1. For a San Francisco customer, most of them see an average utility rate of about 13 to 15 cents. We're not the 23 centers that Jeff referred to earlier. And that's an important thing to know about and understand about your customers before you launch a program because it, it goes straight to the bottom line. Um, and then you just need to sculpt and tailor your program to, to your customers' needs.